Good night. The devices with low batteries in your home are PlaySpot window battery, 0%. So I have over 30 different sensors in my smart home and more than 50% of them require batteries. So whether you have one sensor or a hundred, here's how you can use GPT to keep track of its status and whether or not it needs its batteries changed. So full disclosure, there are blueprints for this. So if you want to do this in the simple way, uh, you can check out this video from Simon Says Home Assistant to see how to get notified when batteries hit a certain threshold. But since you're on this channel, I assume you want to build it yourself and perhaps use GPT, which gives you the freedom to customize its abilities. To achieve this is simpler than you think, especially if you use my AI intent nodes for Node Red. Check out the installation instructions here or in the description below. Now for the sake of demonstration, I'll use the intent node as a trigger, which allows me to manually start the automation, but use whatever trigger you feel like. So we'll use a template node to gather all the devices with batteries. We'll also format that response so that it's in the shape of a JSON object, and we can give it the key value pair of the device name and state. Now I'm gonna step through this a little bit quickly, but this should make sense. So this is a loop that filters for only sensors that are batteries, and we return the name of the battery along with the current power percentage. When this runs, the output would look something like this. The next node in the system is the chat node, and the information you provide this node will be treated as the system data. If you're unfamiliar with OpenAI's chat completion API, they have this section here where you can provide information about the system, which GPT can use to answer questions. Now, my system chat node will fill this section for you with the information you provide it. In the node, we provide a little bit of context declaring that the system is an assistant designed to provide helpful insights. Importantly, we tell the system to only report batteries below 10%. We can append this data generated by the previous template node by using a single curly brace and provide the attribute key it's saved under. In this case, that key is called payload. Now we have the user chat node. This is how we typically talk to GPT. If we look at the playground, the user chat node will provide the data we see in this particular section. Currently, my nodes cannot facilitate a back and forth conversation like you see here within the playground. You could essentially simulate this conversation like experience yourself, but that's out of scope from this video and I digress. In the user node, we tell GPT to give us a summary of the battery states. The next node is the chat node. Not only does this let you designate the properties and the models to use for GPT, but it also is responsible for collecting the data created by the system node, the user nodes, sending that data to GPT, and returning the response from GPT. The data returned from GPT is rather robust, So I have this response node here, which will create a simpler, consistent output, a facade if you're familiar with software design patterns. The data will come at the following path. We can use text to speech and send the data to any device in your smart home ecosystem to play it. And that's pretty much it. Based on the provided JSON data, the devices with low batteries, 10% and lower, are battery level, 13% play spot window battery, 0% please make sure to charge or replace the batteries for these devices as soon as possible to ensure they continue to function properly. What makes this method powerful is if you want to track devices that are offline or unknown, we simply need to add it to the template and tell GPT what we're looking for. Bruh. Do you understand how devastatingly groundbreaking this is? Your automations get smarter simply by providing it more data and clearer instructions. That's it. You don't need to code anything complex. You don't need any crazy complex logic. It's mad simple. You know what? Go sit down in a corner and think about what you just did. And when you're done, go watch these videos over here and get inspired. Chuh.